Hi everyone, uh, thank you for being here to your interview today. Um, so congratulations on winning the uh, MOVE 5 competitions. And um, to start off the interview, I would like to uh, do a bit of self-introduction for, uh, for myself and I would invite each of you to um, introduce yourself briefly. Uh, so I am Ben Tang, uh, one of the co-founders at MOVE. And I, I am a chartered architect in the UK and I'm currently working at Boston Partners in London. Um, yeah, anyone want to start first? Darren, yeah, yeah. I, I, can, I can go first. Um, hi, my name's Darren and I'm a MArch student at the Sheffield School of Architecture and part of the winning team. Cool. Um, I'm Harry. Uh, I'm currently doing my master's in uh, Manchester, uh, Manchester School of Architecture. I'm part of the team as well. I'm Laddie. I'm currently in my sixth year of um, MRS architecture. I'm also on this team. Cool. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I just want to ask you guys, uh, what's, um, um, why did you join design competition to start with? Um, I guess we're looking for like competitions to join over the summer. Um, and then we found this and we thought it's quite interesting to have um, this. Well, it's not, uh, first of all, the, the, the content is not on Earth. It's like designing a spaceship. And we thought it's quite interesting um, to bring bring in some um, of these uh, kind of uh, ideas into our, the, the, I thought a competition idea is quite interesting rather than just designing a traditional building. Hmm. Yeah, I'll about the others. <laughs> I think also it was during a period where um, space exploration is quite um, is sort of an up and coming sort of trendy topic nowadays with um, Elon Musk's SpaceX ventures and um, the whole um, you know when I think it was the year it was the year, year before last when they managed to use uh, NASA use Elon Musk's Dragon capsule to send um, so they sort of um, decided not to use their own uh, spaceships, like space uh, capsule designs, and use a private companies instead. And um, Elon Musk um, talks about um, potentially populating Mars, and it was all it was all connected, really. I think around this period, and I think reading upon that sort of scientific news um, was got what got me interested in this particular competition over summer. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think. Um... You guys uh, use the concept of um, hydroponics in, in your uh, design. And how would you imagine this being transitioned uh, from a space capsule onto uh, some living pot on, on Mars? Do you think this is something that you could expand on once the space uh, ship reach Mars? Um, yeah, I mean, we... We initially, when we went through the process of design, we initially, um, the, the, we, we read the brief that the journey was going to take nine months and we thought about how, you know, how living was going to be, how, how the use of hydroponics was going to um, sustain itself from in the spaceship and then transitioning it from spaceship to onto Mars. And I think we mainly focused on how it was going to work um, on the spaceship but I think ideally the, the sort of the context of our proposal was that people were already settled on Mars and we wanted to um we so we already had like a base essentially on Mars and transitioning it would be quite smooth from you know on Mars they would probably already have domes and <clears throat> big much bigger hydroponics areas where they can start growing on a mass scale and transporting it uh those plants, those those storages of seeds and um, crops or whatever from there wouldn't be too difficult using um, transport systems, so like rover, Mars rovers, or you know just um, regular transports. Um, we have we also sort of delve in the idea of maybe if the spaceship were to be there for a long term, we could also use the space convert the spaceship itself into a hydroponics like maximize and optimize the space of the spaceship as a hydroponics lab in addition to the base on Mars. So that was some of our sort of ideas of how it could be used post-journey. Post, post so. 
Cool. And also one of the part of the competition brief uh, covers the social aspects of uh, space traveling. So with countries uh, normally, uh, well, today, with a lot of countries that has the technology to travel to space, they're usually superpower, um, like countries with a lot of resources uh, to put into this. And usually that presents some sort of bias in terms of the selection of people that travel in space. So um, this competition is also um, trying to put that um, into discussion where uh, we talk about the social issues about uh, sending mm -hmm. people into space. And um, do you think, um, what do you think are the fair ways to make this um, space traveling more inclusive in a way that covers people from all countries and all race? Um, yeah, I'd like to hear yeah. ideas. In terms of the, uh, because our, from, from the brief, we, we kind of based the uh, project in, I think it was 2018 that we based it on. Yeah. And then uh, we kind of, we're, the, the technology part wasn't really a big con con concern of our project, but rather like how people uh, would communicate within the, the, the payload. And we kind of used the um, kind of uh, agriculture part to um, link people. So there would be like different plant types within the spaceship and people would communicate um, within that uh, intercultural space and the hydroponic space. Cool. Uh, I, don't um, I think because at this point in 2080, um, the technology, technology will be so much more advanced that um, we, we currently see now commercial space flying is a thing. Like we, you don't have to be a physically fit astronaut to travel into space. So by 2080, it would sort of open that inclusiveness to anyone really, with, regardless of their age, sex, gender, background or whatever. Um, um, so I think that's something to really look forward to in a, if anything, because it will just tell us that if commercial space flying is available now, but only privatized, Surely by 2080, it will be freely available to most people around the world. Um, in terms of our project context, we chose our participants to be more, had to have an agricultural background. So using sort of, in, we sort of pushed this theme of um, inclusiveness and diversity through uh, growing through agriculture and having, picking different crops from around the world to sort of incentivize conversations of, um, of their, you know, their cultural backgrounds, you know, what, where they're from, and etc. And that would sort of harmonize the um, the crew on board of the spaceship. So, cool. I, I think that's a good take on onto that uh, because um, I think at, at the beginning of uh, adoption in any technology or um, deciding when there's limited resources who gets to be the first is usually quite a difficult topic. Uh, it's like, uh, are you, all of you are uh, calling from the UK today. So you would know like months ago when they decided who are the first people to get the vaccination for uh, for COVID. And it, it it's like a big discussion when there's limited resources, uh, what are the best course of action and who gets to benefit more from those and yeah if it's up to the people to decide it normally it won't be people like uh, Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk yeah. but, but um, yeah it's a bit of a wider discussion and the competition brief. Yeah. Yeah. So I think you guys did well in, the, in that and congratulations with uh, I think all of the Jewers um, choose uh, your design entry un unanimously to be the winner Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm flattered. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've actually read well. some of the other, some of the other, um, actually, no, uh, we're going we're gonna to get to that later, right? Hmm. Like, so I, I think, yeah, just one, uh, I want to ask you guys about uh, how did you first approach a brief and what software did you use to um, do the design graphics? Because I can see there's a wide range of softwares like um, 2D and 3D and also the animation aspects. Mm. Uh, yeah, if you don't mind sharing. Right. Um, 
Do we want to give uh, Hladi a chance to talk, actually? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I think probably we first off, we started like looking at the brief and then we just discussed together, collaborated on how we wanted to um, approach the project. So initially we listed out the key spaces that we wanted within the payload. And I think one of the first um, main ideas was the theme of um, hydroponics and farming. So we had that as one of our main driving themes. And that was part of the listing out the main focus of the project and things we found interesting. Then thirdly, we wanted to see how we could I, um, incorporate the idea of inclusiveness within the projects and how this could be um, produced through hydroponics and farming. And then we came up with the idea of selecting participants across the six different continents. So we'd have um, that inclusiveness represented within the project. And then thirdly, we, sorry, fourthly, then we identified how we could choose these different volunteers based on um, different demographics just to, um, again, promote this inclusiveness. And we made sure that we, um, there wasn't, we could minimize as much bias as we can within the selection process. So we could, again, um, just try to be more inclusive and have a representative um, representative uh, amount of volunteers on this um, within yep. the project. And in terms of software, um, we, um, we initially used, um, we did a lot of sketching first, um, like hand sketches and to sort of, because we had the templates of the uh, payload, we sort of started doing 2D, sort of flat down 2D section wise, what we wanted, like spaces on, in different parts of the payload. And then we sort of transitioned that to 3D where we started experimenting with, um, you know, the uh, the different geometry within the payload itself, the shell. Um, we mainly use Rhino as a 3D, um, 3D uh, software. Um, we used AutoCAD to do the 2D drawings to get the line drawings out. Um, I need a bit of Grasshopper. Um, yeah, so if Harry wants to explain like the sort of what you initially tried with the Grasshopper <coughs> and what the initial... I want to use the Grasshopper as like a tool for like spatial kind of um, arrangement, but we didn't really end up using a, a whole lot of that. Uh, it's mainly for like some model, like the tube was um, partly Grasshopper and the... Um, Cockpit was to party brought up as well, but, um, but, but it wasn't like a huge amount of parametric yeah. in there. Um, and then finally, the video was done by um, uh, it was on Enscape. The render was mainly on Enscape, yeah. Uh, the video was on Enscape as well, and with a bit of um, Premiere Pro of the sound effects, and stuff. yeah, <laughs> and the, yeah, but a white box of software, yeah, and uh, obviously Photoshop in design after that, yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. I, I, I think the uh, the Enscape video is quite successful showing um, the design scheme because it's quite a compact space and um, mm. to show the interior you have the camera rotating and also uh, more like a walkthrough or fly through in your design. Which is yeah. I think <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it was all Harry's job here. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was. It was. Yeah, it was uh, a model. <laughs> we did it. We did it like two hours before the deadline. <laughs> I think. Yeah, I think that's uh, quite successful. And uh, this is, I um, in terms of um, the evaluation of the competition, I um, saw that there's not many students that submitted the video format. And I think that's uh, something that people think are difficult and um, they would try to avoid doing video formats, but... Especially it's this optional submission. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's, um, like personally, I think it's, um, video is a great format to show your design in 3D because it, you get the experience up close and you have the immersive experience, whereas, um, in drawings, you always have to set up certain views and you can only see things from one point. Uh, yeah, so I think you guys did a good job on that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, have you guys also uh, go through other design entries? Um, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, we've um, read and reviewed them. Yeah, we, I think as soon as the um, the options came out on social mm-hmm. media, we just had a look through the other entries. I think we definitely found quite a few of them were really interesting as well. Like it was it was, it was quite nice to see everyone's different approach mm-hmm. to the project. It wasn't all just the same, I guess. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. So it was quite insightful to have a look at other people's um, ideas and concepts. So. so when you look at those design entries, um, what did you think you do better than other entries? As in oh, your some, of your <laughs> some of them, I looked at them and be like, why did we win? <laughs> uh, then, uh, I, th- I feel I've read for a few of the um, kind of finalists and the honorable mentions um, description, the 300 words, and then I feel like a lot of them had really good, uh, good graphics, but uh, I think, I think some uh, in terms of the objective and the ideas, I think some of them lack the uh, the the theme of inclusiveness and diversity, uh, which I thought it was a really huge deal on your on the on your web page anyway. It's like the first thing that you guys said about inclusiveness. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so also, I guess the fact that we did do a video, and I didn't think. I saw another video, or there was another video entry. I'm not sure. Two, three, three, two, four. Yeah, two, one, yeah. yeah. That's that's one of the uh, mm-hmm. most common problems that we see um, as a team uh, running competitions is student focusing too much on the the presentation panel and also the graphics, but not doing sufficient research into the topic, and uh, sometimes gets um, yeah not covering the main core idea of the design brief Mm. yeah um i definitely think some other entries focus on um post journey more than the journey itself i think um i I can sort of remember this one particular entry where a lot of the the description and the entry was more about uh, what would happen when when we do land on mars um Mm. not like it was away from the brief too much but i think I, I don't know, but my my initial look at the brief was that it was mainly focused on the journey, and then you can sort of focus more, uh, as in you can sort of explain, elaborate more on what would happen post arrival, essentially. Yeah. Um, but I, di- I did think a lot. The other entries did have a lot of really good ideas as well. Um, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think the social aspects is one thing that um, most of the design competitions don't look at um, when they when they think about uh, traveling to space or migrating to another planet, they think about people living there and mm. they never thought about the months of journey you have to take to get there. And also mm. uh, the selection of people um, <laughs> who gets to go on to space and um, what are the contributions to the future of humanity. And um, because most likely it's not like a, trip that people do back and forth when it takes months to get there so it it's almost like um yeah migrating out of space but it's almost like a one-way journey and there's a lot of things that needs to be considered before we think about inhabiting in space and i think that's also something that architects and designers can think about uh, is the social aspects of uh engineering this system of um who of the people and also the architecture the space that people uh, travel to designing the journey so yeah 100% agree yeah 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 um great uh and to uh cover the last part of the interview just want to ask if you guys have any future goals and aspirations uh, your professional career in design <laughs> architecture or something else mm-hmm. So, and well, I, I can start. Uh, yeah. The, well, <laughs> all right, go on, Harry. You go first. Yeah. So I'm in in in, in Manchester right now. Uh, my unit is called um, CPU AI, and we focus a lot on computational and um, parametric designs. Hmm. And currently, we're working on a project that's um, trying to create a zero carbon city. Um, so I guess like in the future goals in terms of like finding jobs and stuff, I I, I reckon I want to focus a bit more towards the computational side. And I thought that's like a new part of architecture as well. That's going to be 
that that's going to be it's probably going to be like um uh like the future i reckon with all these like digital kind of um aspects and like even metaverse coming up i reckon this type of computational kind of uh, like gen a generative modeling and stuff like that would be would be a huge thing in the future so i thought that's something that i want to look into yeah definitely uh we yeah i think climate change is a huge topic and um we we are also about to um uh, venture into something uh related to the metaverse and we'd like to invite you guys to join us on a digital exhibition in a few months time mm -hmm. uh, if you're happy then uh you can send us your 3d model and yeah oh sure. oh wow, okay <laughs> this is quite this is quite new this is quite what do you uh, mean digital works mm -hmm. we yeah we we are building a digital exhibition uh platform which is uh interactive. Like a VR headset or something? sorry do I need a VR headset to join or something? Uh, not necessarily, but if, <laughs> if you have it, it will be a different experience. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. How interesting. That's very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. If you guys are uh, interested in taking part in that, that would be great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We'll, 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 we'll probably, we're most <laughs> likely going to join, I guess. <laughs> uh, we'll have a discussion about it first, but it does sound very, very, um, enticing so yeah i'd be interested perfect and um yeah what, what about um other other goals in the future um uh, timothy um so yeah similar to harry i'm sort of in the same um atelier um unit at manchester so we focus on uh, in cpu focusing on like parametric design and um yeah so we're looking at like designing low carbon cities and that is something that i'm quite interested in like due to the climate crisis and how we can sort of um, adapt our cities and design cities which are resilient to um, the changing climate. So after that post in uni, I'm looking to go into working, focusing on the computational side, but also having that, um, um, focusing on themes of resilience and how we can design cities in these kind of ways. I think also being in CPU and doing such computation made this, um, doing this computation a bit more exciting for us because we kind of do like uh, future thinking and looking at how we can sort of uh, expand architectural design. Because this competition, it wasn't a traditional architecture competition, it was um, designing a spaceship, which is quite less traditional. And I felt that was more fulfilling for us and it was more of an exciting design project for us because of that as well. Perfect. I, I can see uh, why you guys teamed up. Then. <laughs> yeah. Share the common goal. Yeah. Uh, what about Darren? Um, so uh, we all did our undergrad together at Nottingham, University of Nottingham, but um, they then both went to Manchester. I went to Sheffield. I think one of the main reasons why I chose to go to Sheffield instead was um, Sheffield's very socially conscious, environmentally conscious as an architecture school. And I'm in a unit where we're not necessarily our main focus is on sustainability and design, but it's because every unit in Sheffield does have, a, a, you know, a criteria where we have to respond to the climate emergency. Um, my my particular project running right now is looking at different scenarios um, and opportunity projects that can take on a different scenario to what we have currently. So, for example, it's... Um, the Isle of Man in the UK is separating is separating from the United Kingdom and becoming independent. But what does that mean? What does the independency? What does a being autonomous mean? What does how do our projects respond to that? And my particular goal in this year is looking at how I can make a community, how to have sustainable communities uh, that are resilient to this sort of to this change of um, of you know from being a crown dependency of the UK to now becoming a fully independent island. Um, particularly I'm focusing on the, the musical culture and aspect and heritage of the island so it's it's a little bit different from the computational side from them too um, but I I quite like um, looking at sort of context and cultural context with um, of the places that I design um, and relating it back to heritage history not necessarily working with heritage buildings but is most important to remember what's important of that place and why it was important why it was so 
mm. and sort of bringing that aspect to the project today. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my goal. And I guess my goal in the future would be, um, yeah, exploring sort of different ideas of culture, uh, heritage, and which is very, I feel like it's very important in the UK with all these yeah. buildings. Um, you know, the, the, the UK has such a long history and, and I think designing within context is so important. Um, yeah, so that's, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's my sort of... Yeah, my that's idea. also a very good one to uh, go into, I think. Um, <laughs> it's gained a lot of popularity with uh, all the retrofit projects because yeah. there's a lot of listed buildings in the UK and there are a lot of technology and being replaced by newer uh, or the advanced technology and uh, making some of them redundant. And it's a very good opportunity to reuse those buildings like um, the Tate Modern and Battersea Power Station, um, loads, of, loads of examples. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, yeah. My favorite one is the, uh, one of the factories that uh, Thomas Hedwig worked on by uh, mm. trimming those concrete um, concrete pipes or um, I forgot what energy station that was um, but uh, they, he, he trimmed like a sphere out of all the all the concrete um, cones and then made them into lift shafts that was a really oh, cool wow. yeah yeah I know it definitely, I, I was in a unit last year where we solely focused on retrofit and that was uh, really 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 insightful because I've never done anything quite, quite like it before my masters um my tutor worked at caruso and she tells me that adam and john caruso uh, adam and john um sorry adam and peter sorry uh, are now only doing retrofit projects in um as part of their, their studio they're only they're now not doing any new, more new builds they're only focusing on reuse which i thought was really really good um definitely in terms of like lowering embodied carbon and energy um reusing materials that you know rather than recycling it so yeah great uh, i think it's uh, great to see all of you found topics that you're interested into developing further and uh yeah i think that's a wrap for today's interview and uh, we're always looking to expand our team at moo and we yeah look forward to our future collaborations uh we'll, we'll keep in touch and yeah. also within this week we'll post this on our youtube uh, channel and we'll send you the link as well so you can, oh, you can see them share it yeah. to your friends can I ask you something can I ask you something huh can I ask you something did you, yeah, did yeah, you do a year out in the DLF sorry you do a year out in DLF oh yes I did did you stop <laughs> <laughs> I think no I think I met I, I think you were doing a year out when I was doing my uh, internship back in before oh. uni <laughs> oh right so we, we have met before in yeah, I think Hong Kong so. <laughs> interesting and I know I know Josh as well from, uh, yeah, I worked with him for a year last year, two years Oh, wow. Ago. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I recognised him and I told, I told Josh about it and he was like, oh, yeah, I know, some, I know a founder from, from, from New York. <laughs> Great. Oh, small cool. world. Yeah. yeah, it is a small world. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Right. Well, thank, um, you. <laughs> thank you for interview, uh, inviting us to have an interview. We yeah, really no, thank you for it. being here yeah. and yeah. Uh, congratulations on winning the competition. Um, we'll, we'll be in contact again. Uh, so take care. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you yeah. very much. Thank you. Uh, All right. Bye. 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 Bye.